With the release of the Pulse Elite right around the corner, I wanted to revisit the original Pulse 3D headset, which launched almost two weeks before the PS5. I reviewed these sleek suckers in March of 2021, almost three years ago, and was blown away by the sound quality, but only on PS5, not PC. After having these 40mm drivers crank sound into my canals as I beat the coins out of my game collection, I have some strong opinions as to why this is a killer sub $100 headset for its native console, and I'll share a few personal tips of mine to to get the best experience possible from this first party headset. So a quick disclaimer is I'm going to be massaging the back of this headset and saying a lot of nice things about it because I really do like it. I did purchase it with my own hard-earned shekels. I do believe I purchased it at either Amazon or the Navy Exchange to get that little tax-free goodness. doesn't really matter where I bought it. The fact is I bought it with my own hard-earned ducats and down there in the description below is going to be the Amazon listing as that's where I recommend picking it up. I see this headset frequently on sale for around $80 and that's not even around the holidays or Black Friday. It's just random Amazon sales. But let's talk about why this is a phenomenal headset headset starting with one of the most important factors of a headset is it comfortable on your noggin comfort is amazing with the stock head strap which adjusts on a smooth track and fits a lot of head sizes stock ear cups are the weak link here but more on this in a sec the clamping force is not very aggressive and the headset being light at 295 grams makes this thing non-cumbersome in long gaming sessions the way the head strap auto adjusts gives me vibes similar to the psvr2 sitting almost weightlessly on the forehead with the halo strap different than the typical adjustment methods of all almost every other headset on the market. I mentioned the ear cups are the weak link, and while the stalkers aren't terrible, they have kind of that pleather leatherette material, which does a good job of sealing in the sound, as there is very minimal sound bleed. I've never had the person sitting next to me saying, hey, I hear exactly what you're listening to. Turn that porn on, turn ratchet and clank down. They're really slanging their nuts and bolts. But I did pick up a pair of the WC Freeze Cooling Gel Ear Pads. That's the exact title on Amazon. I'm not sponsored by this company. I did purchase these with my hard-earned Buffalo nickels but I had to get them because they are the exact design, not only cosmetically, but also the same exact cooling gel ear pad material. It's on my daily driver headset on the PC, which is the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro Wireless, which I rant and rave up and down the block about because they're phenomenal. But when I'm playing on PlayStation, unfortunately, the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pros don't really work on the PS5. If you try and take the Bluetooth method, they won't pair up. And yeah, you can hook up the base station. I don't want to lug that back and forth between my desk and the office and my setup in the living room where all my consoles are. That in combination with the fact that the Tempest audio engines work phenomenally with the Pulse 3D headset, it's a no-brainer that this is my go-and-grab headset whenever I'm playing something on PS5 and I don't want to be playing out of my surround sound. Swapping the stalkers for the WC cooling gel bad boys is very easy. There is four clips and they pop off very easily. There is going to be a bit of a snapping sound where you feel like you just broke your headset, but bear with the installation. Snap in the other bad boys. They can only go in one way and as you can see from the b-roll playing here there's a little track that you can actually see lining up and you'll get a nice satisfying click times four whenever you snap these into place and if they're a little bit whoppy jawed they're sitting just a little bit not flush take your palm on each side and evenly distribute pressure and it will snap in with all four clips if that doesn't work take your index and middle finger and slide them underneath the padding and you can actually feel where the clips are and push them in that way so either way installations an absolute breeze on these bad boys they're 26 dollars on Amazon, linked in the description below. They come in five colors. I had to go for this 90s retro pattern. It looks super sick. And most importantly, the weak link, which was that pleather leatherette material on the stock ear cups, has now been replaced with cooling gel material, which that gets thrown around a ton. It's a total marketing gimmick feature, although these work exactly like you would imagine in your head cooling gel would feel like. The surface material on your ears actually feels cool to the touch. I live in Florida here, and the ambient temperature does sway to and fro in my room greatly and these always feel cooler than the actual room temperature in my room so that's freaking awesome there's no fast charging as two and a half hours nets you an average of 12 hours of playback from the 2500 milliamp hour battery which surprisingly hasn't lost any noticeable battery life in three years of use in my house although i do swap between a lot of other headsets another cool feature is you can use the headset while it's plugged in and charging i think all headsets should allow you to do that whether they have subpar battery life or not which i do have to deem 12 hours of playtime 
uh, subpar. EQ modes were added after my initial review, and I'm glad they exist. Having said that, I keep my pulse in the flat EQ setting as the 40 millimeter neodi ne ne b b neodymium drivers, neo I am the one drivers, pair perfectly with the Tempest virtual surround that you'll experience when using the headset as intended by Sony, wirelessly with the included dongle, which I will say is a little bit big and not the prettiest. Now I do have to politely disagree with this article from IGN, not because you can't spell ignorant without IGN, sorry I had to, that's been a long running joke in the gaming community, but because this journalist pointed out that this headset sounds good even without Tempest, which is the audio engines, the virtual surround that you'll experience on the PlayStation 5 console. In my personal opinion, as I mentioned during that initial review, it doesn't sound great as a straight up stereo headset, a 2.0 stereo headset which you'll be experiencing when you use the dongle on PC or you use the 3.5 millimeter port and tether in wired to the bottom of a controller, which you should never do this with the pulse, as it makes the headset sound completely flat as you're skipping over that Tempest audio engine and not getting that virtual surround. And if that's what you want, 2.0 stereo headset, there are cheaper and better sounding options from SteelSeries, Rig, and some of the other competitors. On the PS5, I would recommend doing the 3D spatial sound setup to dial in what sounds best to your sweaty ear holes. Also, I found switching audio priority to Dolby Atmos in the settings under audio is the play if you primarily use an Atmos capable surround sound system, sound bar, or headset as you don't lose any volume unlike wireless stereo headsets and luckily the Pulse 3D also doesn't lose any peak volume and sounds the best with Atmos engaged. Despite the fact the headset is not Atmos equipped and uses the PlayStation's Tempest protocol to handle virtual surround. The nitty gritty is this, use the headset with the included dongle, change the ear cups to a better aftermarket option of your choosing, my favorites are linked in the description, leave the EQ in its flat mode, do the 3D headset calibration at least once, turn Atmos on in the settings, and this headset will continue to impress you and have you forgetting it's a $100 headset on your noggin. I know that sounds like a line out of a commercial or something, but keep in mind this is my own thoughts and this is not a sponsored video. Now if you don't like the white, which I personally think goes really good next to the PlayStation because it goes with that accessory ecosystem that the PlayStation really has nailed down with that white and black reverse Oreo two-tone, but there's a ton of decals or stick-on vinyl graphics, if you will, on Amazon for around $15. And Sony themselves does sell three color variants, the white, a black, and a pretty slick gray camouflage. So with the successor of this headset coming out in a couple of days, the OG Pulse, which I've been raving about in this video, will start to be seen on sale more and more until the final units sell off. I do have a Pulse Elite on pre-order that is due to arrive on launch date. I'm supremely excited to put it side by side with the original Pulse 3D, which has been a phenomenal $100 headset on the PlayStation 5. Drop in the comment section below what you stallions and stallionettes are using in the headset department, that is, and I will see you tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers, so this information will reach and assist them as well. Much like the back of the TV, I've got plugs for all of my socials down there in the description below. And your wallet will greatly thank you if you check the description because there are exclusive discounts on a ton of products, including controllers, control freaks, keyboards, mouse pads, clothes, and energy drinks. And keep in mind that you, the viewer, keep this channel running. The more stallions and stallionettes trotting around the stable, the better. So molly wop that subscribe button like it owes you money, and we'll have the same amount of fun to tomorrow.